Welcome to the EOS Link Setup Guide. The EOS Link is a simple add-on that allows you to connect to the Epic Online Services for multiplayer and matchmaking and VVox for voice communication and voice integration. It takes advantage and requires two additional asset packs from the marketplace. The EOS Link is just a simple integration of these plugins into the advanced framework. So to get things started, we first have to set up our Epic Online Services. So for that, uh, we go in the devs.epicgames.com. This leads you to um, this portal right here. And uh, from there on, on, we can create a new product. This will look something like that. Um, I won't create a new product because you actually can't delete the old ones. Um, so I won't clutter my list. Um, but the, the process is very simple that you just have to set up an image and set up a name and that's, that's all for that. So when, when you have your product done, you, you click on your newly created product and you go to Epic Account Services and you end up with something like that. Um, and you have to set uh, configure. And here you simply add uh, your, your application name, you add um, uh, your, your privacy policy URL and your added support email. Um, then uh, you, you save that. Um, you set the permissions. The permissions have to be set to, to required, um, the online presence and the friends as well. And then you have to um, set, in, uh, set clients. Um, if, uh, if there are none, then you have to create a new client. And this works um, by uh, creating a new client name. This can be, for example, the standard player, add a new privacy policy. And here you can say, for example, the policy peer-to-peer uh, -peer, um, has to be a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, privacy policy. And then uh, remember to have everything checked just to make sure that everything works fine and save and access. Okay, save and exit that as well. And now we can go back to the Epic account services and we can figure, uh, finish our configuration. Again, um, this should be saved. And now at the client, we can set the standard player that we just defined, save that as well. And that's all for that. So now if we go to the product settings and go to the SDK credentials, we should have all the information here that, we, uh, that our application needs. The next part would be setting up the VVox developer portal. Remember, VVox handles the voice integration in a multiplayer application. So we need that in order to talk to or listen to other players in our multiplayer application. And uh, to do that, I would uh, follow the original documentation of the VVox core. And uh, basically what it says is we have to create a VVox developer account. We have to log into our account and we have to create a new application similar in, in the way that we done it in the EOS developer portal. And uh, this process takes about a day to approve for, for VVox, but we can start um, without the credentials right now. Um, you'll end up with uh, these credentials right here, um, which has an, an issuer key and a secret key. And this uh, we can also add later on. The uh, next part would be acquiring the different plugins. Um, again, the EOS link is just a simple integration of the EOS core plugin and the VVox core plugin. So these have to be purchased on the Unreal Marketplace. So on the left here, I have a fresh install of the um, advanced framework 4.1. And on the right side, I have um, uh, the EOS link that we now want to integrate. And first we have to do some configurations. So we go inside the config folder, go inside the config folder on the right, and um, we have to add the Android settings if we wanna have Android support. So we can co simply copy that over. In here is just an Android engine.ini file. And uh, the second part would be adding the default engine.ini. So you can either just copy it over um, but remember, this will override a few of your settings if you, if you already made custom settings. So um, a good idea would be to just simply walk through and see which changes have been done. So let me open them side by side here. And now that we take a look at the default engine.ini files next to each other, we can see that there are a few differences and uh, we can have to copy that over. So the first part is the default platform service which we want to change to EOS. So let's copy that over. 
And the second part that we want to copy over is under script.engine.engine. Um, so let's copy that over as well. Um, so there are going to be these two lines. Copy them over. And um, the next thing would be if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we have the online subsystem configurations. We want to copy them over as well and the VBOX configuration. So taking all of that and copy that in there. Um, here we see that we have placeholders for the product ID, sandbox ID, and deployment ID, and so on. Um, these are things that we have to fill in from the developer portal. So let us do that right now. So here on the left side, I have the SDK credentials as we created them earlier from our product, from the Epic Games dev portal. And we just have to copy in the different credentials so we can find the product ID right here. And I'll copy that in. And then we have the sandbox ID right here. I'll copy that in. And then we have the deployment ID, which is going to be this one. Copy that in as well. Then we have the, the client ID from the standard player. And we'll copy that in. And the client secret as well. And let's copy that in. Um, and uh, the second part would be uh, creating the, the VBOX voice chat. So we have to add the, the issuer and the, the secret that you can find on, on your portal. Um, it's very important uh, that on your portal, you, you will have the wrong URLs, uh, which are not compatible with Unreal 4, uh, with the Unreal 4 SDK. You have to use the ones that are right here in the, in the text document. So keep in mind to not change those. Just import your issuer and your um, secret right here. Then the last part we that we have to do on our configuration right here is uh, to add the US link inside our content folder. Remember not to rename it. It has to be exactly um, the, the naming that it is right here. And that is all. And then we can start up the, our application. And since it's a fresh install, we'll start in the in the menu map right here. But for our EOS link, we have a separate map that we want to use. So um, first, let's go into in the project settings and let's set them up. Um, in our project settings, we go to maps and modes, and uh, we'll change the game default map to uh, the map multiplayer persistent. And we change the game instance class to uh, game instance main EOS link. And uh, let's also change in the in the new map. So just to give an example of where that is, that is a persistent map that we have right here. It spawns a few menus and <coughs> it has uh, the the core menu right here. And um, the second part would be that uh, the plugins need to be enabled. So just remember that, uh, yeah, that you have to go in the plugins and um, the VVox core has to be enabled. Uh, the VVox plugin has to be enabled and uh, the EOS core has to be enabled. So you have to download them from the marketplace and enable them right here. Then we can restart now. So now that we're back in the editor, um, we can almost start testing our multiplayer application. So one Last thing that we have to do is go into our project settings and we want to test it in desktop mode. That's why I'm going to untick start in VR. And it's always a good habit to include your maps into the uh, list of ma maps to package. So if you go into packaging and extend it right here, then you have the list of maps to include in your package build. You want to include uh, the maps that you're using. So in my case, that's the multiplayer lobby map. A map and the multiplayer persistent map. So include all the maps that you want to actually have in your package build. And now we can close that and we can run it in standalone mode. Always test your multiplayer in standalone mode. Running it in the PIE can have difficult problems. And I will open it on another computer as well. So I copied the entire project to another computer and um, did the exact same steps. And I will host um, it on another computer. So I'll just press start and host on the other computer and doing the same thing here as well. 
So again, on the other computer, I pressed host. And now if I refresh the list, I can see the session that the other computer has. Um, and I can join the session by clicking on it. I have to mute my voice or else I will hear me twice. Um, because we're already connected to VVox and VVox detects our uh, two computers and we already have voice chat working. Um, and on the left side, it tells us all the players that are currently in the level. So uh, you can kind of keep on a reminder that this is handling the US system. On the right widget, you are uh, this is only uh, solely handling the VVox system. So if you want to have uh, only only US and don't want to host any any voice communication, you you would have to delete this widget and all the all the content uh, in the EOS system containing the VVox system. Okay, so we can see that we have the other player right here and he could start moving and he can see us. And um, this is basically all that we need to have for our multiplayer. Uh, one last thing that we can try out is server travel. So um, server travel is the ability to switch levels. So if I, for example, choose another level and I wanna go in there, then it will take all players to that exact same level. And um, they will see the same transition that, that I here see as well. And now I'm in the other level and the other player joined as well. And he can still do everything and see everything that we are doing right here. Okay, so this is everything that I need for the multiplayer session. And um, I think from when it comes to multiplayer and especially online multiplayer, this is as simple as it gets for setup. And it's already very powerful in, as it uh, gets you started and you, you can basically um, create multiplayer across different platforms and across uh, either like VR, desktop, uh, mobile or Quest. And um, yeah, so I, I hope to see a lot of multiplayer applications from you coming in the future. I'm very eager to, to see them. And if you want me to join into your uh, multiplayer application, please um, just send me, send me a package build. And I'm very happy to, to see that or maybe a host some kind of event in there. Um, thank you so much. And I see you next episode.